Thank you. Dear TEDx attendees, uh, my talk will be about a huge scientific innovation and breakthrough. It was recently published in a smoking hot journal for clean and production, a whole special volume about my topic, which is strategic sustainable development. And uh, together with my uh, closest peer in science, Professor Johan Broman, also working at Blicking Institute of Technology, we have covered the front line, international front line, on that particular topic. Now, <clears throat> the problem that I'm addressing is that uh, there was no definition of ecological and social sustainability, and that created chaos. Uh, you cannot plan ahead if you don't know exactly what it is you want for the future. And therefore, uh, this breakthrough is so important because eventually, you can, now you can at last put what you want up there and steadily approach it and earn more money because you are part of something which is relevant for the whole world than if you didn't know this. So it's a huge innovation. The story is this. Uh, back 30 years ago, in August 88, I was uh, head of a cancer clinic and I was head of a research laboratory on cancer. And there I made a few observations. One was how wonderful people are when they need to be. When they are supporting their dear ones, their children, their relatives with cancer into the future helping them to go through cancer treatment. Another observation was how wonderful society is and the scientific community who managed to define sustainability for patients with cancer, how they could actually be, how the cure could be defined and get there. So we, today we cure well above 50%. And when it comes to children with leukemia, for instance, it's well above 90%. Another observation was that in the first half of the 20th century, uh, we didn't have a definition of cancer cure. So what we saw was then was patients moving into a sort of funnel of declining life expectancy until it was over. And the funnel was draped or uh, dressed with numerous impacts from all over the place. It was fatigue, it was anemia, it was dysfunctional organ systems, it was all kinds of problems. But we didn't know how they were connected because we didn't know the root cause of uh, cancer. And consequently, we tried all kinds of tools, which was the next area of confusion. We tried transfusions and antibiotics and operating one tumor after the other away from the patient, but it didn't affect the funnel of declining life expectancy until it was over and we had lost. And then we didn't know how to cooperate either. We didn't know how to put pathologists and surgeons and medical doctors and nurses and social workers in the medical community into cohesive, coordinated action. And then the definition came. The root cause came by good science. Cancer evolves in one single stem cell, multiplying to two, four, eight, and they just keep growing until they take over the body system and it's over. And then, the definition is naturally on the table as well. Now we can define cure of cancer. A, in the future, when the funnel opens up, we have managed to comply with the first principle. We have killed the last cancer stem cell, of course. And number two, but we have not killed the patient. And both needs to be complied with at the same time, of course. And suddenly, everybody improved their research in their silos. So pathologists knew what they were going to do, and surgeons and medical doctors and nurses. And suddenly, we could cooperate systematically to make it happen. I also made a few other observations. One was that... The same kind of species, humans, behaving in this wonderful way, when it was about one very complex issue, didn't do it for sustainability. The sort of textbook ABC didn't work. A is 
put a definition of what it is you want ahead of you. B, where, are, where am I today in relation to what I want? C, what are the optional moves? And then you can add a D. How do I stepwise use those moves until I reach what I want? You all do it, right? This is what we do in chess. You put principles of checkmate up there, and then you ask yourself repeatedly, how am I doing in relation to those principles? What are optional moves, and how would I like to distribute them to get there? Now, you may think, well, isn't that a bit difficult to apply on sustainable development? Uh, chess can secure. It sounds a bit difficult, doesn't it? Make no mistakes. The idea is such is so intuitive that everybody in this room does it all the time in your daily lives. Let's say that you are, were born in Rome and you are going to move to Cascrona because you've got the top job here that you're looking forward to. And now we're looking at your home move. What do you do if you've never been in Cascrona? Can you still move here? Yeah. And you seem to score every time you do it. And it is an utterly complex issue with thousands and thousands of things that must be coordinated and framed until you score. So you put principles of success ahead of you, automatically. A, the new living must be close enough commuting distance to your job. The second one, you must be able to afford it. And the third, it must meet minimal requirements of comfort uh, for you to run your job here. And then you organize every mod piece of modeling, every detail you do, so that you frame it in that way, including all your preferences and values, and you don't confuse those things with one another. So, you don't end up in a ruin of a castle in Berlin that you can't afford and trying to figure out what went so wrong. You never screw up at that level. But there is a sad tendency in society that we have a tendency when it comes to this particular thing to become more stupid in groups than either individually in the group. Because we seem to be more and more sloppy the more people we are when it comes to that obvious thing, to define winning in cancer or winning in chess or winning in a house move. But it is more important when we need to cooperate to create a sustainable world. So I sat down one day by the computer, August 88, and I decided to try to find the opening of the funnel for a much larger patient, society suffering from the deadly disease, unsustainability. And what I, first I authored a wonderful consensus document with myself. I had complete consensus with myself that this is a very nice story, very comprehensive and clear. Uh, and then I sent it as a cancer scientist to toxicologists and chemists and all kinds of experts uh, in, uh, on the Swedish community that were famous for their sustainability ambitions. And for one professor to receive the truth from another, it's irresistible to go for all the flaws and superficial thoughts I had committed myself to in chemistry and physics. So the, it came back to me and I gained weight from all the red ink. And instead of giving up, I authored another version, and after 21 versions, we were in consensus. This is a bloody good big picture, a very good starting point to find the definition of the opening of the unsustainability funnel. And in the midst of that process, I turned to a number of very well-known Swedish entertainers who were beloved by all Swedes, and ask them, would you like to celebrate this? Because we are going to send it out to every Swede. And they said yes. And then I went to the head of entertainment on Swedish TV, Sven Melander, and I said, uh, would you like to give us a broadcast time if we score and manage to send this uh, consensus document to all Swedes? And, and he said yes. And then I went to the Swedish government, Department for Education, and I said, me and TV and all those scientists and entertainers, blah, blah, we are running a little project here. Would you like to have this information package, free of charge, sent to every school in Sweden? Free of charge. 
do you mean all those scientists have agreed on something? They never agree on anything. Yeah, it was a hard work, 21 versions, but now we have agreed. And it's a good platform for a continuous international dialogue. And they said yes. And then I went to the Swedish king. And I said, me and the government and TV and so forth. And the king said, yeah, I would love to be the patron of this. Which in Sweden means that it is religiously and it is politically neutral and for the common good. That's the only thing he's allowed to accept like that. And then I went to the sponsors, a number of businesses well known in Sweden to be good guys. And I said, me and the king and the government are running a little project here. And in April 89, the mailbox opened up in every Swedish household and a little audio cassette equipped with a picture book, just like the one you can download next to my name, dropped down. And the impact was enormous. There were uh, discussions about this everywhere. I was in TV sofas every morning. I was in a hearing in the parliament together with my scientific colleagues behind this consensus report. And suddenly it spread all around the world. And today we have universities all around the world connected to Blekinge, which is my working place, uh, the hub of, of this international movement amongst universities. And we are testing it in one business after the other one municipality after the other. And then we are refining the framework. And then we are testing it again in reality, and then refining it, and at last this is now published for the world to know. And um, I'm so happy then to be accepted for this TEDx presentation, because it's a completely different thing to develop something like that, uh, and create uh, number of businesses and municipalities working as laboratories for the testing on the one hand and then spreading it to the world at large on the other. I'm not even part of, of Facebook. Do you understand the problem I'm up against? So I'm so happy for this opportunity. Now I'm just going to show you a few slides. Um, I would like to have a little... Yeah, okay, thank you. So, uh, the first slide in the picture book that you can uh, download is just this one. Uh, it uh, just presents my, my workplace. And uh, the next one is just a presentation of the name of what this is all about, what it does. And you can download uh, the special volume of science there. But I would prefer that you uh, first download the picture book. Uh, and then you can go deeper into any of the scientific articles of this special volume that I guest edited with Professor Bruman. And then it tackles reductionism, which means confusion about details. We seek knowledge, but we drown in information about the impacts. And leaders today don't know how the impacts connect, because they don't know the definition of sustainability. Nor do they know how all the tools that we could use, how they could be connected into a cohesive help in strategic uh, processes to sustainability. Because they don't know how to define the opening of the funnel, just like the cancer community didn't know how to use all the tools in medicine. And they couldn't cooperate in cancer. The same is true here. We need heads of state. We need executives in business. We need toxicologists, physicists, chemists. But how could we possibly cooperate if everybody arrives at the conversation with his or her story about sustainability? We need a sharp definition of checkmate, cancer cure, or moving into another house. And now we're going to moving into a sustainable home. And then we need to share something which is robust for planning and designed accordingly. The next slide just says that this can at last be done, and the framework is called the Framework for Strategic Sustainable Development. And you can read what is said under that slide. And then, of course, we had to develop this uh, by starting at that jewel in the universe that we inhabit together. And we asked ourselves, why do we have a funnel there in the social system and in the ecological systems? What are the basic mechanisms of destruction? The root causes of destruction, like we found the root cause of cancer. And not until then could we define the opening of the funnel. And we only discovered three ways of destroying it. And those three mechanisms, easy to understand and easy to follow operationally, explain myriad of problems. Climate change and toxic 
toxicity, shrinking biodiversity, shrinking food production uh, capacity of soils, uh, terrorism, uh, increasing tensions on the geopolitical scale, uh, eroding trust. All those impacts can be explained if you understand the basic mechanism of destruction of the ecosystem, and you can read more about that under this slide. Uh, so the definition is there, at last. And then we have the social system, as important. And at the level of the system, it functions through trust. There is enough trust in general between people, not only between cousins or relatives, but there is a general sense of trust. And that can be ruined by various kinds of abuse of power along uh, five different dimensions. So also social sustainability is now defined by operational principles. And now you recognize the funnel, how you can make sense of all the problems with declining forests, cropland and that long list. And you can define, because you understand the opening of the funnel. This slide explains that this is the best way of improving your bottom lines in business ever invented, because this is about survival issues. And believe me, survival issues are very convincing in the end. So the demands for survival help from a sustainability point of view are just increasing as we speak on the markets. And there are now growing numbers of bankruptcies for people who didn't understand this in time, and success stories from organizations who did. And therefore, we should do it systematically. The ABC of curing this patient. And if you do it that way, now you can make use of all the tubes, which is another source of confusion. And now you can cooperate. Because if everybody do their ABCDs by the same boundary conditions of sustainability, they can at last cooperate. Which is now happening around the world. Now you can make use of the United Nations sustainability goals because you can cross-read them with your own ABCD and see what you have forgotten and what you like to add. And now you can use the, them strategically. And final slide is that more and more organizations are doing this. This is downloaded from the homepage of Eindhoven. Remember, if you do it this way, moving from on a bridge towards full sustainability, because you know what it is, it is more fun, it is more helpful, it is more economically rewarding than any other alternative. So please download the picture book and see how you can be part of this extremely important endeavor. Thank you.